Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the <coughs> Sofa Chat Stories episode two. Uh, today is me and my friend Giuseppe here. Hello, Giuseppe. So, how are you doing? One week from the first video. I'm doing, and... doing, doing pretty good. I think we agreed to discuss um, more about how to what who is a contractor, how to become one. And things like that yeah today is the continuation of the last week video but it's something new that now we have a, a name for the podcast that last week we didn't have so now it's the sofa chat stories welcome everyone okay uh, so guys let's start let's start with the first question who is the contractor and maybe you can start from there i don't know who is a contractor you should tell me I know myself that there are usually, mm, if we think about corporates, there are two kinds of contracts that are offered to new joiners. And are contracts as full-time employed from the company, and there are uh, mm, business-to-business contracts. So it means that the person that is joining the company has his own legal entity, and there will be a contract between uh, the person, the, the company of uh, the person, and uh, the second company. But yeah, I guess that uh, this one is from my perspective, but indeed probably is much more complicated than this. Do you want to add more details to this? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, you're absolutely right about what you just said. And yeah, I mean, I can only add that it's not only limited to be working in the corporate world, but you can be hired by, let's say, any other type of organization in the world and maybe by some companies working from abroad, like in the United States, they can hire you while you are being domiciled in Finland. So it's also kind of a big difference from the being employed from the company, because I think you will have a really hard time here. Um, and when you, when you are trying to look for employment in Canada while being living in Finland, I don't think that's that's possible. That one depends. For uh, working with so different time zones can be challenging. But if there are like uh, teams that are well organized, this should not be a big problem. But I guess the main difference between uh, full-time employed and uh, contractors is mainly that uh, with the second one, you will need to take care of all uh, the taxes, the taxation. Yeah, okay. We, we can go to that in a, in a second. And I just want to elaborate more about how is it different to be a contractor from a full-time employed person? In your mind, can you, can you guess? Uh, in, indeed, uh, mm, you have less uh, protection from the company, I guess. So, for example, that usually if you are part of the company, it's uh, a relationship that is more near. It's like that you are part uh, of, uh, of the product company. So it means uh, that they see you in a different way as well. Being a contractor, you need to renegotiate every three, six months, depending from the contract. Uh, and... Uh, and at the same time, you need to be responsible about your performance because in this case, if you will not be um, on the top of your of the performance uh, that they are expecting, uh, it's much easier to replace uh, the, um, the, contract, the consultant, the contractor. But still, what is the difference between consultant and contractors? Um, let's start from what you just said and like the technical details. And I think, again, what you all mentioned is, is all correct. So technically you have less protection, of course, you have less financial stability because you have to re renegotiate your contract from time to time. And yeah, and because in a lot of European countries, employees are being protected by the laws. So the company cannot just sack you. In, in, in like two weeks without giving you a fair amount of the compensation for that. For the contractor, it's very different. It's very, very different. But, but let's look at it from the more philosophical perspective, if I may. 
So that would be, I think, being a contractor is expanding your personal freedom in many ways. So, be, like, imagine Finland. You are so well protected by the laws. But at the same time, you are so dependent on your company. You are so, so dependent on your company. You have to ask for permissions to go on vacation. You have to, you know, go on maternity leave. And, well, I don't think you need to ask for that. But still, like, you need to ask for the salary raise. And as we might know, this might be quite tricky in Finland or sometimes almost impossible. You will always hear the same answer. Yeah, we can reiterate about it next quarter and, and see how the numbers are looking. And yeah, just fin to finish this thought. And to me, that's putting a lot of your life choices on the company shoulders. And this is what I dislike to be dependent on something, which is the company. And being a contractor, of course, while you have less financial stability, less certainty, all the contractors, they're getting fired like the, the first. When something bad goes with the company, the contractors, they all get fired immediately. That, that's correct. Yeah. But at the same time, it's expanding your freedom in the way that you are making a lot more decisions. For example, you open your limited company and then you can work on different on, on, on dif different companies, but then you decide how much salary you want to pay for yourself from your company. You can establish your own rates and don't let any company say that you are um, that you your service costs less than you are asking for. You can just say goodbye to this company and move on. You can go on vacation basically anytime. Like within two months, you can decide, okay, I'm, I want to go to Caribbean. And then you don't have a boss that you are going to go and ask, can I go to Caribbean, please? Because I haven't been on vacation for such a long time. You're a contractor. You have a lot more things in your hands. <laughs> I'm not sure about that indeed. Because there is, uh, that one is just a, a difference in the contract. But you, if you are working for a corporate, you will still need to agree when to go to holiday. That's that was not the case for me working. Okay, but you are working in a really um, particular area. In a normal company, you still are part of the system, and you need to ask the holidays, as everyone else. So, okay. Holidays, no. But I guess that that one is never a problem. I never saw any situation when there was uh, any some disagreement about some days uh, not working for the project. Okay, I still want to reiterate on the holiday. And let's say you really want to go to Caribbean. It's November in Finland. You are working on the project and you really, really want to go. So... I don't know, six months before that, you can think about your contracts and do not start any new contracts before November. And you can just go to Caribbean. You have enough money after working as a contractor for two years. Mm -hmm. And then you can just chill on Caribbean for two months if you want to. But if you are employed, you are kind of living from the paycheck to the paycheck. As we discussed last time, there is not much money to save. Honestly, you have indeed uh, some amount of free days that you can use during the year, but you need to agree with um, your line manager if there is the possibility of um, going in that particular time. In that case, uh, you will just not send the invoice uh, for uh, the amount of days that you will be out on holiday. Yeah, you just tell people, OK, I just uh, will be out for some time and then, yeah, just not give don't, me money. Don't call me. Yeah, don't call me. I'm out. <laughs> And then usually the one very important thing that I forgot to mention, being a contractor in the company means that you have a bit less responsibilities, especially if you are working in the managerial circles, like managing teams, because you are kind of not a part of the company. And the company think about you, thinks about you in the same way. You are not employed. You're just a contractor doing some contractor work, which cannot be performed by employees which means we cannot give you a lot of responsibilities because you can just jump off within a week. 
Yeah, at the same time, it's uh, there will be always problem with that because after a while, people forget about uh, um, the kind of contract they they are all part of the same family. But you can always <laughs> remind them that I am just a contractor, and guys, you have you have no power here. Yeah, we have a bit different opinions on that, and that's that's all right. This is just, I mean, I'm just trying to. Well, I'm not pushing like any contractor to say that. I'm just all here by myself. It's just a lot more ways and tools for you to let others know that they should respect your boundaries. Because if you are employed, as I mentioned, you are too dependent on the company that gives you that paycheck every month, that might pay for your lunches, that might give you a medical insurance. And yeah, this is kind of like dependency. It allows some companies Mm -hmm. to violate your borders and can i ask you also what are the other pro and also the the cons about being a contractor yeah okay let's start with, there are of course some cons yeah uh with the pros yeah as i mentioned last time when we had uh, this podcast on this the same coach last saturday uh the big pro is the rate that you are charging for your work so if company is usually for the contractors, this means that they don't have employees that can do your, that can do this specific work, and they are willing to pay a bit more than if they would pay for the employee, which means you can make more money. Which means contractor usually has their own company, which is like also QFTO in Finland or like limited company in the American. American space. This OI. Yeah. And they can, you will pay less taxes if you collect all that money on, on your company. In Finland, for example, if you go above, I don't want to lie again, but if you cross the 10,000 euro salary line, you will pay a lot of taxes because of the dynamic taxation here in Finland. But for the contractors, I think maximum you will pay is 24%, but not the, not on the entire amount of money that you get in, but only on the profits. But correct me, for example, imagine that this company will have a contract with your company mm -hmm. and you just mentioned that you can decide what is what your own company will pay you. So it means that you can decide what will be the amount of money that will be paid to you and that you will need to pay the taxes on it. Yes, you will You will still pay yourself a salary from mm -hmm. your own contractor company. And yeah, but you have to decide how much you need, you want to pay for yourself and you can optimize your personal tax. But again, this is still a way, there is still like a, a margin that allows you to save the money. And then, the, and then for example, on the company, imagine you are working one year and then you are getting 100,000 euros per year on that company. And then you spend the entire 100,000 of euros through this entire year, which means you pay zero taxes, zero corporate taxes, because you have no profit. You That's spend true. all the money. And you paid, your, and for example, you paid the salary, you bought, I don't know, a car, you bought, you bought the apartment and things like that. So... You can optimize your taxes in a lot of ways here. And one very important thing, if you have profits and if you had paid the taxes, uh, the corporate tax, the next year you can pay yourself dividends from your own company as you are being a shareholder of the company and that company had the profit during last year. And this dividend is being taxed a very little. If I'm not mistaken, you can pay yourself a lot of dividends, like tens of thousands of euros, and it gets taxed around 8%. So this is, people call it like a loophole in the laws, but I guess it's not a loophole. It was made that that way. So, you know, to stimulate people to open their businesses and, you know, pay corporate tax, but you can still reward yourself a bit with those dividends. And of course, that, that works for any larger company because contractors, they're usually very small companies. I guess that by having a company, you will need to have an accountant that help you to optimize the taxes during the year. Yeah, let's uh, move on to the cons. 
It is definitely a learning curve to, to open the company and to maintain the company. Even though in Finland, that's relatively easy. If I'm not mistaken again, to open the company here, you need to pay around One, 230 one. euros or something. Yeah, around it. Yeah, and then, I mean, you open the company within one hour online. You don't need to go anywhere. You just provide your passport and that's it. You have your company. Then you need to apply for the VAT number. That might take some time, but that's usually not nothing all too crazy. You will get your VAT number within a couple of weeks if you need that. How works if you want to have um, work with different companies? In that case, you can you can decide how much time, um, for example, if will not be a full time employment, you can decide if working like six hours with a company, other six hours with another company during the day, is there a limit, or you need to be maximum seven hour and half for day? That I don't think there is a limit. Usually for the full time employment employment. There is a seven hour and half. Yes, if if you are being employed by the laws in Finland, you cannot work more than seven point five hours per day mm -hmm. unless agreed otherwise with the company. I guess there are some circumstances when the company might ask you to work overtime, but of course yeah. that's paid a bit more. That is paid extra. Yes, while you being a contractor, well, it depends on the contract, but usually you don't really have any limits how much time you can work. So. At some point, I had five active contracts with the five different companies and organizations. All of those were like a part-time running contracts. But yeah, there were no limits, basically, how many clients you can get. And then, I mean, if you are working as an advisor, for example, that doesn't really take a lot of time from you, but it, it can still be paid quite like relatively well. For example, if you are advising in the security space, especially in the crypto security space, again, that can literally take you 10 hours per month and that can be paid. For that service, you can get paid a very good amount of money. You need to have a specific expertise. Yes. Uh, moving on to the cons a bit, we can talk about that. So you mentioned the accountant. I can also talk, say a few words about that. That definitely adds a bit of the overhead. And then you definitely need an accountant. There is no way you can do it all by yourself unless you are a seasoned accountant by yourself. So I'm not. Yeah. And then there are some bureaucracy. And there are, for example, in Finland, you need to know the Finnish language in a pretty good way because a lot of like governmental and taxation portals with the information, they're not translated to English. So you definitely need some accountant with the, of course, certified and usually accountants, they, they also have their own companies. So, and for me, I mean, I can, I can name numbers. I'm paying to the accountant around 200 euros at, at, at most per month. Sometimes it's like 140 euros. Well, it depends on the amount of work that she needs to do for me, but that's never more than 250. That, that was just one time 250 when we were doing the uh, fiscal year closing and we needed to you know, check the report if numbers match mm -hmm. and things like that. So is this amount of money deductible? Yes. Okay. So. If you are calculating the taxes from the profits, this is the money that you are paying. Um, how to say it like for your company to run. This is your expense. This is like in the same way as a salary that you are paying for yourself. This is deducted from the profits. This is not a profit. You spend it on the services that you need and this is deducted from from the profit so you're not going to pay the tax on that and also usually uh, you will get the VAT re reimbursement because the invoice that uh, your accountant is going to say you it includes 24% VAT mm -hmm. and you will get it back next month okay okay about the pros we, we can mention the VAT which is super super good so imagine you're buying some equipment for the for the house I don't know um, I don't know, computer, for example. But wait, here you're talking about 24%, but if there is some uh, expense that contribute to your income, you should, I guess, uh, deduct it for the 100%, no? No. Only the VAT? Yeah, you deduct only the VAT. Though, for example, you are buying, I don't know, a 1,000 euro computer, you will get back only 24%, and the rest is not accounted as the company expense. 
So it still like goes into your final profit number and then you have to pay the tax tax from it. Because I mean, imagine you're getting 100K euros per year and you just spend it all on computers and things like that. So, I mean, you have a full house of computers and the uh, fancy stuff. I mean, you got to pay the tax. That's true. I um, wanted to ask you another thing. What about the pension? Uh, the pension, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Finland, I think the, if you are being employed, the employer pays some portion of your pension. Yeah, that's true. I don't really remember the percentage, but uh, employee still pays a larger portion of that that's being deducted from your salary, if I recall correctly again. But from the company, I guess you can choose how much you are willing to do it. So in my case, I'm paying 100% of the pension by the company. Um, yeah, and we can move to the next question. Um, finding your clients. Yeah, but what are the cons? The cons were operations. So as I mentioned, you need to have an accountant for sure. Yeah, but this deductible. So yes. at the end, we'll help you to run your yeah, but business. It, it's not about the money, it's about the time. Because you mm -hmm. will be spending time talking with your with your accountant. And for example, you need to close the fiscal year. You will be talking, bless you. You will be talking with your accountant on how to close your fiscal years, how to optimize your taxes, mm -hmm. uh, where to rent the office if you need one. So that's a, a bit of the overhead, I would say. And this is the con. The second one is for someone that might be an instability in terms of like you can be you know scared of being fired or your account um, contract not being renewed by the company mm -hmm. but there is also a pro if you are very good at what you're doing you will always have a job you will always have a contract and yeah i think in terms of operation costs if you buy something on the company you always need to save the check or invoice and you have to give it to your con uh, accountant so she they will calculate all the like a profit losses, deductions, VAT and things like that. And imagine if you are making a lot of purchases per month. I don't know, you, you bought like equipment, then you went to the restaurant, then you ordered a taxi. And it's always you have to remember that you need to save all those checks, invoices and put it in some place so it can be all processed later on. And yeah, other than For that... For the biggest amount of things, if you are buying some devices, you are always saving the check for the warranty. So it's uh, about uh, taxi, uh, travel ticket, uh, restaurant, that one I understand. Yes. But usually you already save the, the check for that kind of things. Yeah. So yeah, I think those were the cons. Yeah. And I don't think anything was worth mentioning here more, unless I will remember something so far there are not so many difficulties because i always thought that was a lot of work that uh, a lot of overhead on the top of your everyday responsibilities but for the way that you are describing it is like yeah there is something that you need to take care of, but at the same time there are a lot of uh, you have not more free time but you have more choice you can decide uh, you can uh, redefine your contract uh, you can have multiple contracts at the same time you can uh, just communicate that you will be working remotely from a different country and they can say at the end will be more likely an agreement if you are an employee is more like complying to some um, company policy uh, so till now there are not really negative parts i just like uh, mm, think that is uh, mostly positive yeah, I mean, from the philosophical standpoint, look at it from the direction that you will increase a lot of, you will increase options that you can you can choose in your life, right? You can, you're more free in, in what you are choosing, in what you are doing. You can abandon some projects within one, two weeks notice period and just jump to another client. And it, it gives a sense of freedom in your life. And it's much better because with the work, I know a lot of people like my friends, they kind of like saying to me, I have to get up at nine because I have a team stand up at 10. And I mean, there is no way around it. Your employee 
there is a, like a mandatory stand-up check at 10 a.m. I want to, to say something. I remember that if not this company, the previous one, I was like leaving uh, maybe 10 kilometers from the um, client office. There was the daily meeting at nine because the product owner was always busy in some meeting and we needed to be there, all of us, at nine. So imagine that there was no parking, there was uh, traffic. Uh, I needed to wake up at seven to be there at nine. Horrible. It was horrible and there was no way to let this person understand that it was not a reasonable time. I was like thinking like, hey, no, I will, I will not say any names or any company. But still, uh, at that time, I remember that I just said, uh, that's it. I changed client and that one was a consultancy company so I could ask to be moved to some other uh, some other project but at the end is uh, pretty similar to what you are doing you can decide and you can decide by having uh, two weeks window as notice, notice, notice time just to give an example about early time working I usually wake up at 9 or 10 and I usually start my working at 12, sometimes at 1 p.m. Terrible life, really. Yeah, so I mean, I just go to the early gym <laughs> most of the time and then just come home, have a lunch, and then I start working. Sometimes your day are so chill, you just don't work at all. You just do something else like, like YouTube, for example, learning about equipment and things like that. What is your... Uh relation with people uh, that are working for the project, uh, but they, they are full-time employed? Um, I can only say from the, from the past, because at the moment I work in the type of organization that doesn't have full-time employees. So they are all uh, with your same kind of contract? Yeah, I mean, we are all on the contract. I don't know, maybe there are some like C-suite top people, they're working I mean, on the different terms, but so far I know all like developers, they're all on the contract based. And I mean, some people are there for three years now and they, they enjoy it. And yeah, and that company is registered elsewhere. It's not, not Finland. Yeah. But for example, I saw a lot of my colleagues that left the company to go to start a project that was not based on Finland but was based in the US. Also, the compensation was really different, but also there was other, com not constraints, but time zone is different. So you need to be working more in the afternoon till, uh, till late. Mm. So that one is, uh, if you know what, you, what you're doing and you have like your uh, features, you're working uh, autonomously, that one, there are no problems. But if there is like interaction with other people that are also involved in the same project and they are like in US or New Zealand, so really edge cases can be Yeah, so I would say I mostly work with US-based people and some of them are living in the on the eastern coast of United States, which is California or whatever state. And usually we, we have our like asynchronous sync ups when it's 5 p.m. in Finland and it's 7 a.m. in California, for example. I don't really know the exact time zones, but people tell from, from their perspective that it's quite early. But sometimes we have to, you know, sync up. It's not mandatory. It's just, you know, I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm jumping off work. They're just jumping in. So just need to tell them a few words. What, what is going on and what are we working on? And yeah, in the previous companies, it was, well, it's not really the company, it's a DAO. We can have a separate episodes about like a different types of organizations in the modern world. Let's say it's just a company. And yeah, you have to keep in mind that if you're working in the American continent, like, I don't know, Latin America, Brasilia or Canada, United States, you will need to work a bit more in the afternoon, but it opens your first half of the day and you can do whatever you can just wake up at nine, you know, have a relaxed family time. Yeah. Family time. You can go to, to the gym and do whatever you want. And then in the afternoon, you start slowly, sl slowly start doing some work until it's seven or 8 PM. And then you still have some time left to finish your day. This is the arrangement. Um, if you have any questions, I ask you to drop them in the comments. I will be more than happy to, 
reply to them all. Do you think we should also ask to subscribe if you are not a subscriber? Yeah, for sure. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. Please. And let's talk about how to find your first clients. And if you can tell me a few words about, like you are not a contractor at the moment, you're mm -hmm. considering it. So what can be like the first step for you, theoretically? What are you thinking about? You know, usually when you go looking for a company, for a project, for a, a new employment, where you go? You go on LinkedIn, you select all your, all your fields, like uh, the kind of position you are, uh, you are thinking and uh, the kind of contract you can also select, I think. If he's like part-time, full-time, uh, flexible, on-site, remotely. Usually there are a lot of filters. And this one is like, um, there are different platforms. It's not only LinkedIn itself. So probably I would uh, start already, I would start looking in the same direction that usually happen with a normal kind of employment. I can give you an advice. How did I start? And maybe this is for, for the people who are considering to open their company, become a contractor, full-time contractor. So imagine you're still being employed and you're thinking about it. And my first step was that I went to my manager, CTO in that case, and I directly asked him, like, I want to open my company. I'm tired of being employed. I want to, you know, just be by myself. Um, do you have a possibility to take me as a contractor for, I don't know, six months. So I can, I can, you know, uh, bootstrap my company, the budget, the finances a bit. And they said, yes. And most likely if you are a valuable employee in the company, your manager will tell you the same way, the same thing. They will just say, if you can work for us for, I don't know, six months, four months before you hand over your responsibilities and leave the company completely, we might take you as a contractor. And for, for many people, I suggest if you are a bit scared of doing that, talk to your manager and ask them if they are willing to do it. Because like, imagine you are making 6K and you want to become a contractor and you can easily ask your boss to give you 10 or 11,000 per month as a contractor. That will kind of be the same for the company. You have more expensive, but also they will have less expensive. Yes. And they don't have to pay the pension. Mm -hmm. So that's one part. Uh, I think there is something to do with the taxation as well. And I guess with the insurance, so they don't have to pay any benefits to you anymore because you're not employed. So you're kind of by yourself. And for the company, it's also a bit easier because they, if there will be some layoff seasons, which often it is during, during these times, especially, they can fire you immediately. Yeah. Just to reiterate, speak to your manager, ask them if, if they are considering to pick you up as a contractor. And they, I mean, you can just jump off from the company as being an employee and, you know, become a contractor for the same company. This one is for the first, for the first uh, contract after that you have your own company. But what about the second, where you will going to look for um, other employment uh, with this kind of contract? Yeah, that's a bit, now it gets a bit tricky because there are so many ways that you can acquire new clients. But that will require for you to be more proactive in terms of establishing new social connections. So I would say networking is the most important part in it. So I don't know, I assume that you are working in the SaaS development and then <clears throat> you're using AWS or GCP or Microsoft Azure. Look for some conferences or meetups that are happening in your region and just go there, talk to the people. I mean, try to tell others that you're working as a contractor now and then you are maybe considering some some new contracts because you have some spare time next quarter. Um, I mean, this is what I did. I mean, my, my path is a bit different. So, I mean, I would not suggest it like as a, you know, the route to follow for a lot of other people, but well, networking. But yeah, exactly. Usually networking work, works always. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Now I just remember it, it might be the con 
for many people because if you are a contractor, it means that you have to work on your brand, on your personal brand. So because if you're an employee, as I mentioned in the previous podcast, you are kind of invisible person, right? You are you have your profile on LinkedIn, you have your skills, but you are kind of working for the company and you are a company asset. If you're a contractor, that's different. You're your own asset, which means you have to market yourself and your company. And yeah, this might be tricky. This might be tricky if you are not a social person and you do not do, you do not like to do these things. Um, then yeah, <clears throat> maybe I don't know if you need to if you want to consider to become a contractor. To be honest, but if you are a very active person, this is what you like doing. Uh, I, I mean, you know people, you like to meet other people. Uh, yeah, this is not a con for you. Okay, so let's move to the next topic, I guess. Um, next topic was a um, financial side. Um, highly depends on the region, of course. But as a contractor, you can make much more. I mean, two, two or three or four times more than if you would be making on as an employee. But the difference is... That you can focus on a different market mainly this but also this is not your salary all those money they will go to the corporate bank accounts which is different taxation is different how you can operate those money is different for example you cannot just go and buy yourself i don't know a, a mansion with two pools that would be i guess a tax violation or something like that so that would be a bit different i mean i guess you can go and buy a mansion with two pools if that's generating the revenue for for your company let's say you you bought the mansion and you rent it on airbnb like okay. on a weekly basis but if that generates the revenue that's considered the company asset and uh, you are good but if you bought the mm -hmm. mansion and you if you are living in it and it doesn't generate any revenue any profits then that might be a problem so for example if you are buying a boat and uh, the company is renting that boat and you are using it once a week one one week for a year because that boat is the asset that generate the revenue that is doable <clears throat> it depends on how you use the boat if you use the boat to swim to your clients or if you use that boat to swim to some place I don't know, to the conference on the Cyprus. Mm -hmm. That might be considered okay. I but mean, if you use that boat to just go in the in the I mean to the Nordic Sea and fish, I don't think that's that's okay. a good way. We cannot use it then. Yeah, and the same thing with the cars. I know that it also highly depends on the countries. Some countries they have a very loose taxation legislation. And I know that in Estonia a lot of people they just buy cars on the company that's not a problem in finland i know that it's, it's a problem that's why i'm not buying the, the car in the company because um there, there are some limitations how you can use this car you need to track your kilometers i guess and somehow report it to your accountant and then you need to put it on the balance sheet somehow i didn't really go very deep into that but my accountant advised against that so i'm not doing that there is another way to buy a car and when you buy a car, you need to print stickers with the, with your company logo, for example, and put it on your car. So if there will be any questions from the from the tax office, you just say, "I drive this car. I have the stickers with my company logo. I market my company." But that means also working on your brand because there will be marketing done at the same time. Kinda, kinda. But I mean, I mean, I just didn't discover that side. Haven't discovered that side yet. Uh, maybe in the future but yeah i just know that not a lot of people are buying if they're working as a contractor i know that not a lot of people are buying the cars in the company that might be that might cause some problems of course that one because can be used for um, private things and for work as well so maybe it would be better to have the two things separated like that you have one car only for uh, work purposes to go to the cloud to the customers yeah. uh, and if there is like some how we call how we say it in english commutation to some other some work location so yeah. if you are going to every day to the office and you have a specific car that one you can keep all the expenses uh, related and separated by the private uh, private car yeah i think that that would be totally fine if you have i don't know two clients living in in Helsinki, or not living, working in Helsinki, and you're living 
in Nespa, for example, so your route is like 20 kilometers. I mean, and you have to drive to those clients at least like three times per week. I think car and the company is just fine. I think you can justify it uh, for the tax office and say like, hey, I'm just using the car for this purpose. But if you are buying a car in the company and going to the grocery store or to the gym, I don't think it's a, <clears throat> I think it's a no go. So don't go for that. But always check your country laws about that. Again, I know in Estonia, people were saying that stop working as an employee, open the company and you can buy a car. And I guess no one is, you know, tracking that. So you can just use a car as if it was your own personal car. But yeah. Um, and about the financial side, I can highly suggest this is like a very good suggestion. It was for me a very good suggestion. So imagine you have a client and you find it very interesting. You want to, you know, put this client into your box of clients, the people that you know, but they offer you slightly less money than you would usually ask from your clients. And I would heavily advise to not do it because that would first psychologically, that would ruin your self-esteem a bit. And second one, of course, is you're losing money. And yeah, I, I just have standards for yourself. This, this is a part of the brand, right? Because if you are on the market of contractors and you have your rates, I mean, never, never drop your rates, whoever the company is, whatever the company is, just don't drop your rates. That will, I mean, from a personal perspective, I did it not even once, just a couple of times in the past. I worked for those companies. In the end, I just quit after some, some period of time. Just I just understood that it's just not worth it. Of course, I have those company names in my box with the other companies, but I would suggest not to do it. It's just not worth it. Have your standards and do not let anyone violate those standards. Sounds cool. So I guess, uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I think if you guys have any questions. Suggestion for the next videos, yes. uh, wishes, just like comment down below and we will be anyway here as every Saturday. Yes, just drop them in the comments and I will happily answer them all. So, and I think that's, that was it for today. I really, I'm really happy that we are here today and I thank Giuseppe for hosting this. And I think when I say thanks to everyone who will watch this video and I will see you next Saturday. Guys, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.